part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. We laugh at everything. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman in blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me is the man of steel, the man in red, Superman red, that is, Mr. James Cole. Hello there. Hello there. And we also have a special guest with us at this point, the Superboy blue. What's up, Solomon? What's up, guys? (laughs) Solomon wanted to talk with us about this episode, which is rightfully, I think, um, Rightfully so. So we're going to get into news first, and we welcome you to the cast. Uh, First thing, okay. Superman Legacy is exactly two years away from releasing today, as of this recording, which is on the 10th. So think about that, guys. Two years from today, we will be talking about a new movie. Oh, you know, I hope so. I look that's, forward to it. That, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's it's very interesting how it felt like there was such a huge slump in Superman kind of stuff. And then since we've done this podcast, the plethora of content that we've had that's new. <laughs> from Supergirl to Krypton to yeah. Superman and Lois to now My Adventures with Superman. All of the animated film boom. And then here we are coming up on, I mean, we've had, since this podcast, we've had technically Superman appear in two, three movies and then one Supergirl movie, you know, and then we'll have a new Superman in two years while we're still doing this uh, podcast. Yeah. So it's pretty, um, pretty sweet. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that that's pretty sweet. It's, it's exciting to think. Uh, to to anticipate a new film coming out, um, two years is a long time. A lot of things can be, um, a lot of things can happen. Yeah, a lot of things can happen um, when it comes to producing the the movie. So, um, you know, here's here's looking here's looking at a new new Superman movie that I'll be seeing as soon as humanly possible. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> of course, we'll both be having our midlife crisis when the film comes out. So yeah, great. we'll do a, a fanboys thing and go break into like a James Gunn place and make him show us the movie. Show us now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Superman, there is a figure for the 85th anniversary that McFarlane has done that will be at the San Diego Comic Con exclusive. And I understand why the figure looks the way it does, but I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, it's red and blue, which is kind of cool. The the color scheme, the kind of splashy look that it has, there's some interesting bits about it. But as just like a figure, it's not um, You have to put it in the pose against the (laughs) backdrop to make the 85th anniversary hope sign. Um, To to be like, oh, that's why it looks like that. Yeah. Uh, Gotcha. That's why, but yeah. And I guess McFarlane will have a booth at San Diego comic-con and yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, DC films is not going to be there, um, but there will be comics. Comic-con is becoming back to being what it was a comic book convention instead of a film fiasco. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I mean, you know, these films don't exist without the IP. Um, Comics need to be comics need to be um, appreciated. They do. Um, you know, they they're the groundwork. They're these characters have survived for eighty five years. Like there, there's a reason. There's a, a malleability to the the characters, um, which is crazy to think because why why 
is there such harsh reactions to different uh, versions of characters when they've had so many iterations over decades, the better part of a century? Because it's the internet and we now have a and... voice where we can all <laughs> complain about. Right? It's like, if you don't agree, you're you're wrong and you're stupid and I it's hate just like, you for it. It's like the extended <laughs> inter- of Talladega Nights. If you don't chew Big Red, well then, you. Right. You know, all those little commercials. <laughs> that's, right. that's exactly what it is. Yeah, um, that makes sense. So, coming July 18th, Burger King will have the Blue Beetle Burger, where your fresh-made bun will be blue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just dyeing bread with food coloring. Just like know? they did with Spider-Man. But it's, it's so weird because Hardy's was supposed to do something with the Flash because Hardy's Carl Jr. I don't know how these fast food things work anymore because, you know, back in the day, McDonald's and Taco Bell did stuff with DC. And then I guess Kentucky Fried Chicken did something for Superman Returns. I didn't know about that because I didn't eat a lot. Because where I was, oh, I didn't know about KFC. That. Oh, yeah, I see these posts and I'm like, well, that's because I was in a small town that hadn't yet to build their KFC. Um, and then Man of Steel, I guess, had some sort of small tie-in with Hardy's Carl's Jr. And so I saw something of The Flash was supposed to have something and Brian and I seeked out two different Hardy's and they didn't have anything. So for Burger King to have Blue Beetle is kind of interesting. But if you were to go to Burger King right now and order a kid's meal, they have Warner Brothers Looney Tunes dressed as superheroes as the toys. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, I saw that um, as I drove past. So, yeah, we're going to 718, time to get a Blue Beetle burger. So that three times fast. I don't know. I'd rather, I, I guess I'd rather the Bugs Bunny dressed as Superman. Yeah, I'm going to get that too. Um, than, than a Blue Beetle burger. But as of this recording, tomorrow, 7 Eleven, that's right. National Slurpee Day, by the way. Ooh, Slurpee Day. Yeah, I guess I got a thing from Speedway. You can get a free Slurpee if you show up. So I'm going to try to take some and get a Slurpee. Um, Yay. Tomorrow, <laughs> the new Blue Beetle trailer drops. And that's then all I have for you. I'm excited for. I, I also have to say something. I watched Supernatural today. Yes. So I'm going to watch this first full length super episode of Supernatural. So I guess we're going to have to bring back our Supernatural cast so we can have Solomon guest and talk about his episode. I would love that. We need to. It's only been a year, but yeah. we'll talk about that oh after this. <laughs> a year. <laughs> So, Shoot me. Kill me now. I, I ran two polls on Twitter. The first one is, when, when Superman and Lois return for season four, will they kill Superman? And the majority of votes with a 65% said no. Compared to a 35% that said yes. So I, I, I don't want to get an agreement or a um, mad point, but I have to say that Superman will die. I know you're a Doomsday fan. How are you, my son? I don't know. It's weird. And then I say, how, how does how did Solomon uh, Solomon? How did you like uh, Doomsday from Superman and Lois? You know what? I kind I liked him, but the only thing I have to say is his head. <laughs> yeah. And then my other poll is for all the Flash fans: How do you prefer the Flash to travel in time? Cosmic treadmill. Or running and like kind of focusing. I have to say, running and coming and focusing. No, what? What the second one is? I can't say words that right now because I'm a kid. Fifty-three <laughs> percent said cosmic treadmill. With forty-seven percent say running and focusing. I thought that was interesting, just because you know, with the film and even the TV series, it was kind of just him running. So I just thought that'd be an interesting yeah. kind of thing to look at and talk about. They tried some interesting things by doing like, um, like the, what was it? Chronosphere. And wearing the tachyon. Yeah. The harness or something. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they've tried, tried some different things. Um, I, I suppose you could do it in, in different ways. Um, uh, in my opinion, I think, I think if you use like, the cosmic treadmill then you get more of a precise 
yeah. um, moment in time, perhaps. And then if he's doing it just by running, maybe it's less precise. I mean, that would be an interesting concept, I suppose. It would be. So that's all I have for pre-show warm-up. Now it's um, time. Speaking to... of the Flash, though, I did see today that after four weeks, it has crossed two hundred and sixty million dollars globally. Yeah, it has become a huge bomb, and I didn't want to talk about it because it breaks my heart. Because that movie does not deserve that. It is a good movie. Um, hey, I was saying it as a plus. I wasn't. I wasn't using it as a negative, even though most would. I'm just saying, like, it's very sad that it is, yeah, because it should, is low. That should be like, oh, it's domestic, right? It, um, yeah, it should be. And watch it, watch it hit home and on HBO Max, and it just explode with people talking about it and praising it. The people who can't go out to the theater, like, oh, it'll be on Max sometime. Well, well, consider June how busy of a month it was, and then, um, you know, it going to digital uh next week yep like you know i mean a lot of people you know we've talked about this and and i've heard people on podcasts talk about it how they um you know just going to the theater is a level of anxiety for them you know that if they weren't doing the podcast they would wait for it to come home I just, you know, they were they were on top of it when it was the same day release. They were all over it because of that, you know, being able to see it at home. And then families with like families with like uh, six, seven people. Uh, that's why I you can't that's why go to the movie. You know what I mean? You're gonna wait for it to come home and then rent it for twenty, twenty five bucks. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think if they want to start doing something where, like, after two weeks in theaters, they start doing the digital rentals. Maybe that would help compared to dropping the digital. Like you can rent it now for a plus for 20. You can rent it for 20 bucks or buy it for 23. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's, it is what it is, but Hey, we got something fascinating. Well, I'm, to talk I'm about. sure they're going to look at that revenue stream at least just to, you know, have it help close the gap. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're gonna be they're gonna be looking at that. It's, it won't be reported. We never really get to see that much on how those digital uh, those digital sales pan out um, because like expensive movies like The Flash, it probably won't pan out. But like movies like uh, Welcome to Raccoon City, um, that only costs thirty to forty million to make. It did surprisingly well uh, at the home market after um, it was released. And, you know, it's actually at least they're making a new another Resident Evil live action movie. Not necessarily if it's going to be. I mean, from what I heard, they're shooting it in the same area. So maybe it's connected. It should be. What? Why are they making so many Resident Evil movies and so many Resident Evil games? It's like Teen Titans Go, and it will never, like, I'll never end. Yeah, it will like, never end. Good. I, I've Good. been joking recently, like, Teen Titans Go is like the Simpsons or Family Guy. Like, it just keeps going, and, re- like, it'll never end. I think the Simpsons already end, Dad. No, the Simpsons are going to go, and then... I'll be watching with my grandchildren. So no, <laughs> no we more watch a new Family episodes. Guy. <laughs> Solomon. So all right. Hey, in my good. opinion, they can keep going making those uh, games and movies. Uh, exactly. About Resident Evil. Y- okay. Yeah. Yeah. Solomon, mm-hmm. you wanted to be on this episode <laughs> because we have a new Superman cartoon. My Adventures with Superman, and that's what we're here to talk about. The pilot episode. And the second episode, which are a two-parter. Now, I got my notes, and I'm going to give a little context backstory here. This show was announced a little over two years ago. Okay? It was in May of 2021 when it was reported that two seasons had been ordered for a new animated series entitled My Adventures with Superman. Uh, We've learned that it'll be 10 episodes for this season. And there are 22 minute episodes, which is great because I was wondering if they were going to do like the 10 minute episodes or 11 minute episodes like a Teen Titans Go or a Justice League action. 
Yeah, no, I am I am extremely happy that it is a standard uh 22 24 minute episode. And before we get break it down a little bit here. Um can we talk about how confusing they bumbled up when the release was? Long pause. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't experience any. I didn't experience anything with the <laughs> release. So, well, they you have say, to give me context. Well, it says midnight on. Uh, I have to look at my dates. But Adult Swim, the sixth, the sixth okay. at midnight. Okay, so that means you would stay up Wednesday night. The clock hits midnight. You're now the sixth. Boom! It should be on. But no, it was. You stay up the 6th, and then at midnight, which is technically now the 7th, at midnight, it premiered. So people were confused, because I had people messing like, I stayed up and it didn't come on. Oh, they stayed up the 5th, so that way when it turned the 6th, they were up at... at uh... Because even when I put in the 6th at midnight on my calendar, that's what it is. The 5th into the 6th, not the 6th into the 7th. Yeah. Because then it said, next day on max. Well, that so basically what happened was at midnight on Friday, it premiered, which is technically Friday morning at 12. And then I woke up. I checked my phone and I saw on iTunes, it said my adventure of Superman coming soon. And I said, OK, well, I bought the first two episodes because I'm going to buy the digital to support the show. OK, and then Janine and I went out about our day at three o'clock. I pulled up my phone. I saw someone say, Hey, it's there. I looked on iTunes. Boom. Both episodes were there. Cool. But then I saw on max, both episodes were there. And I was like, okay, that's weird because I thought next day on max would be Saturday, but no. And then, um, I found out they released the first episode on YouTube. Oh, so, wow. So that everybody can watch the first episode at least. So Adult Swim Cartoon Network's YouTube has the first episode in full. That's great. That's smart. Yeah. That's I think it does it you know what? You know, not to to bury the lead or spoil anything, like I think it's totally worth it. Everybody should be able to see it. I do. I think it's a great but what sucks, and I will say this, what sucks is our good friends in Australia, uh the YouTube link does not work for them. If you click on the link, it says the uploader has not made this video available in your country. Oh. Poor Nate, guys. Celebrate Nate. I know. But our good friend Nate Nate McKenzie, we figured out a way for him to check it out. So um, we were able to do that for him. See, Alora is mad too because she thinks everyone should have access to Superman. Good job, Alora. Good so, job. The pilot episode uh, <laughs> is Clark Kent builds his secret. His uh, summary of the series is Clark Kent builds his secret Superman identity, embraces his role as the hero of Metropolis while sharing adventures and falling in love with Lois, a star invested journalist who t- asks, who also takes Jimmy Olsen under her wing. The episode is Clark Kent's first day as an intern at the Daily Planet. All right, fellas, we ready? I'm ready. So the the episode, yeah. uh, the, the animation, first of all, reminds me of the recent Netflix Voltron series. Where it just has that very same kind of look uh, where it's anime-ish, but not full-blown anime. Yeah, I it it reminded me a lot of and in a family friendly way. It reminded me a lot of Invincible. Um, yeah, yeah, very, but maybe one step more towards anime. But it did. It reminded me a lot of um, Invincible in its animation style and flow of action and everything. If you have not seen the Voltron series on I have Netflix, not. it is amazing, except for the last season. <laughs> um. See, I think the animation is awesome. So right from the beginning, when this show started, so let me let me set the table for you. It's me, it's Solomon, it's Sela, it's Jania, and it's Brian. We all sat down together, and we started watching it, and immediately it started, and this boy's face just lit up. 
he was <laughs> he was smiling he was happy um he he made the the announcement that Clark Kent seemed to be about his same age in the opening yeah, yeah. and like the beginning and uh we also enjoyed the shirt that Clark was wearing you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought the suit was awesome. That old um, S that we all used to draw on our notebooks. What did you call it? I'm asking because we called it, and at this time I was living in Virginia Beach, so we called it the Surfer S. What did you guys call it? Anything? Oh, I it, it didn't have a name. I never knew what the hell it was. I just draw. I just drew it. <laughs> I, I heard we always called it the Surfer S, or people. I saw. I think at one point I heard people called the Chain S because they'd connect it like a chain link or something. But yeah, yeah, I thought I thought that was an awesome little callback to um, just he's wearing an S on his shirt, but it's kind of that fun S we all used to draw. Yeah, it's it's an S, but it's like a very '90s S. Um, maybe not even that <laughs> that long ago, um, because like in, in the car, in the car, it's very modern. She has a smartphone um, up on her dash that you can see mounted up. <laughs> yeah, and I got I got thinking about I'm like okay. Clark's probably what 20 21. I was going to say he's an intern at the Daily Planet. They're 18. all super young. <laughs> so but most people graduate if they go straight from high school to college, they graduate about 21 years old. So that's kind of where I'm putting Clark right now is 21. Um cuz he is an intern, we learn. Um but we also learn, you know what we learn, James? Is Smallville is 198 miles from Metropolis. Ah, yes, we did. That's, that's, that's not bad. Not I, my, I'm, I will definitely say, though, I noticed um, as soon as we got in, I mean, red, blue, and yellow, everywhere. His kite, his clothes. His oh, shoes. even the, <laughs> um, to, uh, what do you call it, his kite shape. Was, oh yeah, very much, um, very much the shield. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to trying to do some math here. You know how much I love math. Um, Sovereign problem solved. So from where I live to where James lives is a hundred and seventy nine point three miles, give or take. So Metropolis is over three hours away from Smallville. Take that. <laughs> um, but the first thing I did find interesting is when he started running and got like the first hint of this bioelectricity this blue bioelectricity what do you think about that James um yeah so I saw that and um it was interesting because like he didn't have any abilities or anything it didn't seem like and then the car accident's about to happen. The woman hits the pothole. And, and like, that sparks his powers, almost. Um, it almost made me wonder if at some point down the line in the show they don't have plans for an electric Superman. It would be interesting because it'd be um, the first representation of that outside of, basically, comics. Absolutely. Um, I just think... Um, I just think that it was done specifically like that for a reason, right? And um, then it comes. One hundred percent. It, it's not a one done thing. Yeah, because it's not the only time it happens. Uh, um. So then we go from him that to going like basically like a ten year jump. And I've already seen people complaining, like, how's Clark not going to be able to control his powers after 10 years? Because we see Clark wake up and smash the clock, break the faucet, you know, rip the door handle off, you know. And I'm just like, come on, people, just let it go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, seriously. I, I assume there would be complaints about that as well. Um, I haven't looked at it. I haven't seen any of it. Um, at this point... At this point, in my opinion, it's it's very much the same thing as like um, Man of Steel. Um, he I'm has like, no he has no training. He has no idea of his limits. He's been trying to be careful his entire life, 
He doesn't know who or what he is. He hasn't. He's not. He hasn't been able to experience, um, you know, some of his full capabilities and re- understand the the um, amount of control that he has over exactly. his over his abilities. You know what I mean? This is he's literally learning. Um, it just it it really upsets me when people are like. Like, he's a kid, he's not even Superman yet, but just because he puts on the suit, like, he has to be, like, perfect at everything. I know. Like, from, from moment one. It's annoying. Like, that's, that's not a character. <laughs> like, like if, if you're writing him, like, much later in, in life, and after he's gone through some formal training, yeah. But... Um, that, that is a, that is a stupid and annoying complaint that people have lobbied over the last 10 years. <laughs> people suck, man. You know, I mean, sure, it could be Smallville where he spawns a new power and in like 15 minutes he has 100% mastery over everything. Yeah, and by the end of the episode, he is rocking and kicking butt. Yeah. So, um, but I, I did. People do suck. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the juxtaposition between him waking up, smashing the clock, and then Lois waking up and like slamming the clock and can't get it to turn off. Yeah. And we have Jimmy Olsen, who Solomon really liked. Uh, Jimmy. He was. He was like. He even looked at me at one point and was like, I'm Jimmy. <laughs> I was a lot like Jimmy Olsen. And um, it was cool. Hilar- like, hilarious, funny, breaking every, every cute moment. Me, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and also just the fact that everything Jimmy says is right, but no one believes him. <laughs> Maybe it's an alien. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> J- no, Jimmy. Why not? It's just funny. Um, yeah, Jimmy is really funny. I I do like it how he's how he lives with Clark. And yeah, like all of his conspiracy theories, he doesn't apply to him. Like it's so funny. Um, just the idea of of being oblivious. <laughs> I like that we meet that Clark and Jimmy meet Lois before work as he buys like three dozen donuts. Did and you get him his bib? <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> and there's an immediate spark between Lois and Clark. Not even, you know what I'm saying? Like, and oh Jimmy's yeah, like, from the moment they saw each other outside the store, and J- and Jimmy's just like pushing it the whole time. Like, Ooh, yeah, that was yeah. that was super cute. He's he's <laughs> like, I'm gonna. He's like, I sent it to Clark. Like, what you did? What? Can I at least approve them first? Yeah, let me get a picture. I'm send it to Clark. Yeah. Um but I like how we literally have Clark save a cat from a tree. Had to save a cat. Now normal day. Normal guy. Yeah, he keeps telling himself, normal day, normal guy, normal day, normal guy. And then we meet Mr. White and we find out like they are all interns. And <laughs> Mr. White just reminds me of like a worn down parent who's like told their kids like stop, don't do that, stop. <sighs> I'm just waiting for him to be like, I'm getting too old for this. Yeah. Um, um, I love the characterization of Perry White, and the thing I love the most is every single time he tells them to get out of his office, the transition is the door slamming on them. <laughs> <laughs> I like um that as the as the episode goes on, we see him come alive. But what I do like is the first villainish is the killer robots. Which is very Max Fleischer. It's very comic book, you know, animation throwback. Yeah, yeah it's inter- I mean, it's, it's, it's a very, cool. it's very much like the animated series as well from the nineties. Yes, James, I was literally thinking of that. You just read my mind. Because Salma, what did you and Sayla watch yesterday? We wa- we watched three episodes of the anime series, like the three pilot episodes. Yeah, the last son of Krypton, you know, uh, three episode arc. 
they just watched it on their own. I was so proud. I could cry. <laughs> <laughs> I did get the reference to Mrs. Jurgens. Um, I, thought that, I know there's a couple of probably call outs that I probably missed, but that was one that jumped at me, the Jurgens reference. Um, yeah. And then what I find interesting is that Lois tricks Clark and Jimmy that Perry sent her on an assignment with them. And Lois keeps dodging Perry's calls. And then Perry calls Clark and Clark figures out Lois lied to him. He's like, you lied. And that's a very interesting, like kind of introductory. Um, and then, you know, Clark leaves and Jimmy goes with Lois. Yeah. Kind of, um, kind of gives her a little fallibility in his eyes. Um, you know, since they, since they were so like infatuated with each other from the beginning. Exactly. And we meet the, what do they call it? I had it flip Johnson and all her people, the kids league of newsies, basically. Uh, yeah. The, um, the news, uh, the news kids legion. Um, yeah. I, that's a callback from back in the uh, back in the day. Uh, I can't. The only the only for sure reference and where I know of the characters from is the death of Superman. Um, yeah, they're in they're in Cadmus at the time, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the only thing that that I know them from. But yeah, that's a that was a poll that I loved seeing was the News Kids Legion. Um, and then basically, a robot's attack. Clark fights a robot. He doesn't have his suit yet, and he pulls like some extra clothes and throws on. And we notice that he's not as powerful and strong as we're used to Superman being. What did you think about that? Um, I mean, actually, very, very similar. Um, I, I like that he is developing that his powers are not um that his powers aren't just like topped out overpowered at the very beginning um it it raises stakes for him and for others around if he's going to be able to save them if he's going to be able to save himself hmm um you know, I mean, that was that was a choice they made back in the Superman animated series was to was to basically lower his power level, so that way things were challenging for him. And I found it just interesting because I felt like it was even more lower than what I would expect. You know, right? But um, I do think. Um, but I do think it also works for the story because it gives you some place to go. Yes. Um, and and from he, what we know, we know that he's not fully developed his powers. Yeah. You can see that he has a lot more powers in him um, when he kind of, uh, when he has that, that bioelectric charge go on again um, later on in the, in uh was it the second episode? Or the yes, episode? it's in the second episode. Okay. Yeah, yeah they, they run together as two-parter, but yeah. Um, I watched it a couple of times, so it does feel like just like one whole thing <laughs> to me. <laughs> I, I did think it was interesting because he didn't use any heat vision. So are we just dealing with basically speed and strength at the moment, you know, and flight? Yeah. Um, um, he might not. He might not really have many other abilities yet because we do see him get a swollen um, eye from fighting and um i think i know why then when he sparks again it kind of heals yeah and we see jimmy gets a blurry photo of the flying man <laughs> classic jimmy i think i know why 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 his powers are like that why because he's growing and this is like it's like his first day I bet, like, some, like, probably, like, in episode four, if I make, like, in ep episode four, he will have, like, heat vitamins. And then, up, like, episode six, he will have, like, colder breath. And then episode eight, 
he's going to be more stronger. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. That like every yeah, like that. Cool, cool. Well, so, so an interesting thing is we see that bioelectric, uh, that bioelectric aura. We see it especially around um, Jarrell and the ship. Yep, I was getting there as we transition to episode two. Um, and uh, a, a small moment in there is he when when Clark flies off to rescue his parents because the ship's opening and they're like going to fall in. Um, as he's flying off, the Jor-El says, Kal-El, Krypton is, and then that's when it shuts off. I have a theory that maybe Krypton didn't explode. It very much more seems like war or something. Much more like what J.J. Abrams was going to do with uh, Flyby. So I'm wondering if maybe this is going to be a different story. Krypton didn't explode. It's still out there. Well, there was a planet that exploded. So. The planet did seem like it. Uh, there was a planet that did explode. They did show that, um, mm. but it didn't seem like a natural disaster. It seemed like maybe a weapon or something. And I'm curious, like, because it looks like he comes through like a portal more than the regular crash landing. So that's interesting. Um. And I feel like oh, I'm sure it probably draws on many aspects of Superman, like um, like Superman and Lois does. Um, they might be using more of a teleportation or a wormhole sort of thing, like the uh, Phantom Zone projector did for travel in Man of Steel, bringing him to Earth. What I I like, okay, when he goes home, and he tells like Lois and Jimmy he's sick. He goes home, and like we see. Basically, I feel like the ship that he crashed in, okay, is this Kryptonian tech, and it's growing into the fortress. That's what I think as well. And it's like this interesting, like, maybe he's like in a different dimensional plane, like when he's in there, because the way we have these things surrounding him. And... Well, we'll, we'll, I mean, yeah, we'll see where, where that ultimately leads, but I definitely think that the idea of it growing into, like, the fortress um, is certainly uh, uh, thinking, thinking with the, thinking the right way. Um, I'm still not a huge fan of the way the chest emblem looks, but it is, it reminds me more of, like, recent comics, the way they did Zod's. And even a little bit like Kingdom Come. Um, yeah, his dad's was, uh, Jarrell's was a little more um, Kingdom Come-like. I do think it's very interesting that when he comes out of the fortress thing, he doesn't have any trunks on. And then it's it's Mama Kent who makes him some trunks in the belt. Yeah, that that I particularly loved. I loved how... Um, the suit was Kryptonian. It come it, it comes out and it's it looks a lot like Henry Cavill's suit from Man of Steel. Um, and then now we're seeing um um. And and then uh, she says uh, something needs to be done about this. She's like definitely some shorts, maybe a belt. I was like that is great. Like it's a Kryptonian suit but she kind of puts her own earthly spin on it. Yeah. And I thought that worked great. I think it, I, I think it works better than just, you know, earth it, fabrics. Him, I mean, he would have to have closet closets full of Superman suits. <laughs> you know, um, what do you call it? Um, Totally forgot. Anyways, um, it it it's like getting the best of both worlds, where you get Mama Kent making his suit, but at the same time, it's a Kryptonian suit. So, mm-hmm. what's the one thing we all argue about with, about the suit is the trunks. So you make the suit Kryptonian, and then Mama Kent makes the trunks. Figured it out. <laughs> yeah. So then we have Lois and Jimmy. They're they're still exploring, and they find like C four under the ground, 
and everything. And the person that they're tracking that, that had the robots that and everything turns out to be Livewire. Did Leslie you see this coming? Willis. No, they said they, they called her Willis and it didn't strike me. And then they, and then, um, she's addressed as Leslie Willis at the end. And I was like, Oh my God. And then she started using the electrical powers. I was like, Oh, I was like, that's a cool one to use too, because that's live wire gets her powers usually in some sort of accident, like with or around Superman. Um, it looks like she's getting it like a tech or something. Yeah. It looks like she had tech for some sort of like powers like that um but i think that it's more that the tech affected her now and it's more biological because she she gets stabbed in the back from agent slade wilson Mm -hmm. and he hits her with something and into it and it like corrupts her body and puts her like in a force field and she's gonna blow and it's superman that flies up there and rips it off her back and protects her um one thing I like about the show is I do like the vivid, bright colors. Um, me and Salman have the episode playing as we're watching this. Yeah, I, I, like, I do like I like the su- voice, voice cast. Um, I was going to ask you about that last. Is like what we think about the voice cast. Um, I was, I was at- surprised to see Slade and him being kind of young. Well, I mean, this is a very young Superman at the same time. It is. Um, it's very young. I wonder, um, because they they had some clearly with the the Suicide Squad tease at the end, or the Task Force X tease at the end. Um, they had Amanda Waller and Slade Wilson, and I'm sure that was probably Rick Flag. I was wondering if it was Rick Flag or Sam Lane. Ah, yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't. I didn't think of Sam Lane. I, I only thought of Rick Flag with it being Task Force X. Um, I do like that his Superman suit is two like two tone blue. It's not just straight blue. It's like two tones of blue. Mm-hmm. And I do like that he fixes the mess he made. Right at the town, the town square, he fixes the cars and everything, and then Jimmy gets his picture to give to Perry. <laughs> Stop the presses! Yeah. And then who gets the byline? Uh, wasn't it Lombard, Troop, and Cat Grant? Yep. Like, hey, who are the other reporters of the Daily Planet? We'll just throw them all here at the end. Yeah. I was like, oh, Lois looks so mad. <laughs> oh, she should be. Yeah. Because that was always supposed to be her big break story, was like Superman. Yeah. Which is really messed up. Like, they took too- that away from her, like the big break Superman. You know what, though? I bet that it's going to open it up for because they're like, oh, well, the story got taken. Like, Clark's going to be like, I'm going to give Lois the byline, give Lois the interview. Hey, yo, James. Hey, yo. What? That's why I'm going to start answering the phone when you call me. It's hey, yo. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Hey, yo. (laughs) He's like, hey, yo, Lois. Hey, yo. Like, he questions himself. (laughs) (laughs) I love how nervous they are around each other, and Jimmy just makes it even more awkward. I love it. Yeah. It, it's a really, really good show. It's really family-friendly. It's really... Uh, it's great for DC fans. Yeah. Great it's for fun. Superman fans. And it's, the Superman fans who are complaining about it are dumb. It finally gives me something <laughs> new to watch with my kids and not feel protective over. And it's just... A, it's refreshing. It's uplifting, just like Superman should be. And it's a good time. Like I love watching my kids light up and enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Um I I watched it. Well, I watched it with Jamie and I watched it with Alora and Alora got to watch it with me twice. Ooh. Um, she yeah. turned her off right. So and she really enjoyed it. So lots of lots of cool colors and action for <laughs> to, you know, a twenty month old. Um so the voice cast, I, I don't hate Jack Quaid as, as Clark. I'm just, I'm not a hundred percent. He's like a 75% for me right now. Yeah. Um, I think he does really good actually as Clark. Um, his Clark is, is awesome. Um, the Superman 
is the part where I think he's going to have to mature the voice just a little bit. And, and I think that's just going to be something we'll see as uh, the show progresses because I think he'll grow with the character. And, you know, I'm curious. Oh, I think so. I mean, is he going to stand out as one of the voice actors with uh, Tim Daly and George Newbern? I don't think so. Jerry O'Connell. I mean, I I don't, I think he'll do a good job, but I don't. I think, I, I think if the show keeps its quality, he will be remembered because he was in such a good, he played Superman in such a good show. And I, I can agree with that. Um, it's kind of like how we feel about our buddy Jason J. Lewis. Love the voice. He does not get the qual- the uh, recognition he deserves yep. because of the show. Yep, because it was one season of of a show that you know that that episode you know that that episode that structure really short like that you know came off the back of I think like making all that stuff. Uh, just like Teen Titans Go come off the back of making all those t- uh, eight, five to ten minute videos uh, for YouTube on like DC Nation and stuff. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Solomon, out of ten, what would you rate My Adventures with Superman's two episode premiere? Nine. James? I'd rate it ten. Um, yeah, nine. Very, very little to, um, very little to complain or nitpick about. And anything I would would be nitpicks, like maybe the age of of Slate Wilson. Yeah, like looking like he's in his twenties. Maybe he should look a little bit like he's maybe forty, not not maybe not maybe sixty, fifty, sixty, or something like he does when he in the comics where he's much older. But, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with a nine as well. But, um. Fantastic, excellent show, very funny, very good to watch, very entertaining, very light, very hopeful, uh, you know, good cast. It, yeah, um, I, I think it deserves a nine and people should, more people should check it out. All right, let's hold off a second. I have something to say. All right, say it, Solomon. I'm going to watch this when I go to bed. You should. Is, <laughs> max? is your max waking up? I hope this show continues. Um, I hope it does well enough on like Max and everything. It's hard to say for Adult See, Swim. Now, Adult Swim has a lot of a lot of um shows that have been there for a really long time, or at least it had a lot of shows that lasted for a long time in their run. Um so this show kind of is different than that, but the anime angle does fit in the in the time slot for Cartoon Network, um, so I, I, I don't know about that, but I really do hope that the show lasts and gets more than a single season. I agree, and it's that's tough what I hope because it, it started getting developed before the new regime, you know. So I hope they're not like, you know what I mean? Like, well, we know it's it going to have a season and... two. We know it's going to get at least a season two. Ooh, oh, yeah, yeah, that did come out, didn't it? Yeah, and I feel like. Because like you were talking about the new regime where it's supposed to be like an animation is in live action and such. And this was kind of in that weird transition period. Um, makes me kind of wonder also about the Cape Crusader thing. They're kind of be falling into that Elseworlds umbrella, you know, which is smart. Um, but yeah, I, I hope too. Like, where's the merch, man? Where's the My Adventures with Superman figures of Jimmy, Lois, and Clark Superman? Give me a Clark figure, a Superman figure, a Jimmy, a Lois, a couple of villains. Like, where's the toys, man? Because we need that to help reinforce things with the kids. And so. and this show is is for the kids so far. Like, it is, yeah, it, it's you should be watching it with your kids. Exactly. So we highly approve it. We love it. I am so thrilled that this is Superman to enjoy with my kids. And yeah, and we're going to go. Break here and let you listen to some of our friends talk. About Stick around for some awesome uh, thoughts from some of our fellow friends and an extra special mini episode tied in with a new guest. Check it out. 
we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Before we start this episode of Krypton Report, I want to take a moment and just give a shout out here to our Patreon. I know what you're thinking. Gosh, everyone's asking for money, and I get it. But our Patreon is only a dollar. One dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going. And what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about. We've done, as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car, and it's kind of funny. And we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also, what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreon special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be a part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash kryptonreport. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth justice and hope remember to check out krypton report on all social media platforms go to linktree.com slash krypton report you find all of our report this is dan jurgens and if you want to have a good time keep listening to the krypton report well t- talk to the phone tell everything you just said so i've i loved the um show superman my adventures with superman um I think it's a great show, and it was one of the best of man animated shows I ever watched. Um, I think I think it's great. The characters are good. Jimmy is like the best character look. Um, Clark is good. Lois is good. I I think it's a great show. So that's all I have to say. Go ahead. And also, guys, Livewire's hair literally looks like my frenemy Jackson. That really, 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 really re- weird hair. Oh my goodness. It really looks like my friend Jackson's hair. That's the dumbest haircut in the world. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it was like. Oh, it's starting now? Yeah, it's talking. So, I like the animation. I think the animation is going to go well with this. Um, a lot of kids today like that uh, anime type style and uh, Studio Ghibli ness. Uh, it was colorful, it was hopeful, it was bright. Uh, Mama can't stick. Um, so there's got a lot of good representation in it. Um, I like that Jimmy breaks up every somewhat romantic moment between Lois and Clark. I like that Lois actually finds Clark attractive from the get go. It's not like a you know Superman thing. Clark sucks thing, um, which is okay when she thinks that Clark sucks. I mean, that's kind of okay. And then she falls in love with him later. But that's all right. Uh, I thought Perry was done very well. I thought thought everybody was done pretty well. Uh, Except uh, Livewire looked a little weird. Looked a little uh, little too masculine, maybe, for my tastes. And uh, I would have liked, like, all her hair to stand up and kind of be like... I I wish she was, like, a little bit more energy. And we got that for a second. 
So I like that. Um, I like that it's almost a, I don't know, it's almost like a Sailor Moon moment when he goes super. Like, I, I don't know, that's kind of, I don't know if that's ever been done before. Where, like, his powers kick in and then we kind of get this whole montage. Like, I almost, that's why I wanted to watch more because I almost wonder if, like, if, like, the suit will... Like, if this electricity, if, like, the symbol will shine on his chest, and then we'll get this, like, whole montage of, like, the, the his clothes coming off and, like, the super it's suit. Very New 52. I almost want, does that happen in New 52? Like, the suit comes on to him? This, he has, like, a on his chest is a small Superman symbol uh-huh. that expands through biotech, and then the suit grows from it. I think I want that. I like because I, I like that montage where like he kicked like these powers kicked in at certain times of emotional stress or whatever. Um, I think that's real co- something we haven't seen before, uh, like in cartoon or action or whatever. Yeah. So I kind of like that. Um, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I think I think it's going to go very far with kids, and that's what I really want. I, I want kids to be like, yeah, yeah I'm Superman. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I uh, I I like that the Suicide Squad's in it. Um, I like that we. I thought so much was set up, and a nice nice solid pilot. I I was really pleased with it. So, what you were saying about the Kryptonians? I'm yeah, like you know, yeah. I'm curious because I'm wondering if it's. It reminds me a little bit like Voltron. You know the the recent Netflix okay. Voltron. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I'm curious what they're going to go with it. Uh, yeah. I have a theory if they're going to do something because it looked like like a portal opened and he was dropped. So I'm wondering if Krypton might still be alive, like it didn't. Ooh, yes, I was kind of thinking that too. Kind of like what J.J. Abrams thought about for his Superman. Uh huh. So. That would be so cool. Uh, and you know, Jarrell looks like a freaking badass with his with his one eye and everything. So yeah, I'm. Uh, what do you think just overall about the show? It kind of made it kind of made the look. It kind of made up. I mean, this is cool. I'm just I'm, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. It kind of made it look like okay, yeah, either either Kryptonians or like. Maybe to be like Krypton's not gone, or like it made it also seem like the Kryptonians were like war bombers. Yeah, I'm. You know, I I've kind of always liked the idea that Krypton basically we're at a point where they, as a society, were no longer a good society, and Jarrell yeah. and Jarrell was trying to push them to going back and wanted a better Krypton and they just had lost yeah. almost like the fall of Babylon type thing, you know, if we want to get biblical. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, Clark represented the last of that, um, yeah. you know, a new beginning. So, yeah. What do you, what do you think of like Jack Quaid's voice? What do I think about him? Um, it, Different. It's different. It's got a when yeah when when he's Clark, he's got like this whole geeky tone to him, which I think is perfect. And when you know he's and when he's Superman, he tries to do the whole geek voice thing, <laughs> especially when he was around Lois. So I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> so it's like just in case, like you know, she recognized him, you know. But I, I like that. I thought that was funny. It was funny. It made me laugh. Yeah. So. And it looked like it looked like the uh, the tech that Leslie had was like Kryptonian. Yeah. Because when he grabbed the crystal out of it, which was obviously the power source, that's when he started hitting all these flashbacks. He like. You know, the shot of the portal opening up. You see, like, probably, like, Kryptonian chicks, like, 
shooting at something, you know, and I'm just like, whoa, you know, where's, you know, I'm very curious about the history of that. And, yeah, and, um, so they said that, I mean, I kind of, I mean, I kind of cheated. It said that she was uh, live wire. Yeah, she is live wire. She's live wire, and, um, and, uh, the agent Slay, that, that's Deathstroke. Yep. That's a young Deathstroke. And I like how that his hair is covering one of his eyes. So that eventually you can... Uh, I like, I like the, uh, yeah, I like the little take on that. The little very Carolina. That's kind of cool. And they really got a weird, odd voice for him as well. It's uh, Chris Parnell from Archer. Oh, interesting. Yeah, he plays uh, Figgis on... Uh, yeah, he plays Cyril Figgis on uh, Archer, yeah. So I'm like, Figgis, I'm like, dude, I know that voice, but he kind of changed... Okay, but he's doing something different, like, kind of like a... Obviously a dark character, because he's a comedic actor. So... But yeah, I like it. It looks like they're, they're you know, they're introducing cast for X and all that stuff. And, you know, you got, you got young Deathstroke. And I'm like, cool. We're getting characters, I'm getting. So that'll be different in the world of Superman. You know, I'm not saying, you know, Batman's going to show up. <laughs> Which I don't think is going to happen. No, I I think I think this needs to be very much just Superman's cartoon. It, exactly, Superman show, and yeah, let's not let's not try to like brush all Justice League characters in the mix. You know what I mean? Because because he's 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 still a very young Superman. He still I, doesn't know anything about his past. He's starting to find out. I thought I thought that ship that he came in, that huge giant ship that was buried or whatever. Oh my god, that was cool as hell. So my thought with that is that it came small, and then it crash landed, and then over time where it's been buried, it's growing, and it's going to grow into yeah, the fortress. That's what they, yeah, that's what uh, yeah, what Martha and Jonathan said that it was like growing. He goes. And I'm like, Okay. So I feel like it's going to be that type of, you know, because like in some instances, you know, they use the crystal technology, which mm-hmm. grows. So I'm thinking, okay, it's yeah. very possible. Yeah, I know. I, I like it. It's different. It's different. We, you know, you, you know, here's the thing. With all these, like, new takes on, like, you know, comics and all this stuff, too, you got to change it up. You can't, you can't, I mean, I'm not saying, like, you know. He's got to go to the North Pole, and he's got to have a bunch of solid dudes there. You know, what if, what if the ship he came in and his freedom life growing, what if that is his fortune? Yeah. You know? And... And I like... I also like, like, the recording, like, it was all in Kryptonese until, like, it shut off, and he started speaking to English, like, oh, shit, damn it! <laughs> they're, giving, they're giving us little teases. And I like that. You know, I'm not saying give us everything in the first episode. Um, okay. It was ordered for two seasons. So I'm really... Okay. And... Well, two seasons so far. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, and I, hopefully, I mean, people need to watch it, man. That's, dude, I, I'm, I'm telling everybody, I'm telling all my DP fans, dude, why aren't you watching this? It makes me think, like, you go back and you look at like the original order for Bat- super for Batman the animated series was like what 10 13 episodes and yeah, then like 13 episodes. and then the the order for season 2 where it was like 30 something yes you know the good old days of animation oh uh, yeah exactly <laughs> yeah oh yeah dude i'm i'm, I'm ready man i for this show I'm so excited like dude I can't I'm, I'm all playing is it Friday yet I'm with you I am with you yeah I'm, just, I'm, I'm really happy and I'm hopeful and I want people to watch the show man. like dude that's what it's all about people watch the show we get more exactly 
Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me today, I have a special guest. As I like to do, I seek out and find other super podcasters. Today, I have Mr. Sean Stackhouse. Welcome, Sean. Thank you, Tyler. I'm glad to be here. Man, I'm glad to be here, too. We've We've commented on stuff online, and uh, I think you you commented on like a live video we did before, you know, and yep. we've chatted, and you had posted something, and uh, I was like, let's let's get on here and chat. So here we yeah, are. Yeah, absolutely. It's always fun. Um, and what's funny is right before we got on here and started talking, my daughter came downstairs, and I was like, I was going to tell Sean something. I was like, you know what? I'll wait till we record. Um, have you ever heard of the game Headbands? No. Okay, it's like this kid's game. It's it's fun for all, but like. You wear a headband and what it is, like a deck of cards and you shuffle and you put the card on like the person's forehead and they can't see it. And then they have to ask questions like, am I uh, an object, a food, uh, uh, you know, (laughs) something like that. And then they have to kind of whittle it down. Well, yesterday, the kids and I sat and uh, show you for all those people who can't see and made our own DC characters collection with uh, we started using stickers. And then some old comic books that we had that were just lying around that were all tore up. And then we started printing stuff off and made our own DC characters with some index cards, uh, cards for headbands. And we sat and I played with my eight and six year old yesterday and played what DC character am I? So that's, that's so cool, dude. <laughs> I could, I could sit uh, in a room with a kid and do that all day long. I'd, I'd be fine. The best one that my son got that I was not sure if he, cause I tried to pick characters that, They've seen from the cartoons, they know from the movies, and from the Injustice video games. Okay, yeah. Um, and there's a couple of characters that maybe they don't know, maybe, I don't know. You, but they surprised me with the one my son got that surprised me was Booster Gold. He's like, am I mm. Booster Gold? I was like, yes, you are. <laughs> Booster Gold's not one that would um, come around all that much. So Exactly, that's why I was like, hey. All right, good job, son. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that we see Booster Gold up in the new DCU sometime soon. And okay, so part of what we're going to do today is we're gonna we're gonna get to that new cartoon thing that you've heard of this cartoon, Superman cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my adventures with Superman. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna get to that. But right now we're just gonna kind of geek out about just news and Superman fandom. Um, yep. But I always ask any first super guest, how did you get into the character? Like, what was your introduction? Where did you first meet the Man of Steel? I anticipated this might be a question. Um, all right. So we were, we we're going to have to go back to 1983. And uh, I was heavily involved in He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. As well. That, yeah. And that was like my, my thing until my mom brought home two figures from the, the Kenner Power Collection. She brought nice. home Superman and Batman. And th- then after that, I had the, the Hall of Justice play set and i had like some of the vehicles and i didn't understand why superman needed like a, a ship to fly around in. i'm like he's supposed to breathe in the air you know I, or mm-hmm. he doesn't need to breathe or whatever uh so yeah about uh 83 84 um when, when those kinner uh superpower collections were going like bonkers i was right in the middle of it so and uh that would have been for also Mm, 84 about a year or so after superman 3 came out and my mom took me to see that after school one day as a matinee at a dollar theater oh, and uh yeah those were the days yeah i know but now i've been riding with superman as my number one guy ever since man that's awesome that's awesome do you have okay do you have a particular favorite version it can be live action it can be animation um is there one that you know, that particularly hits you the strongest? Um, I do. Let me get this. Yeah, yeah, you're cool. This is the fun part about doing this like we are. This is when he comes back to life. Nice. This is like, uh, I know there's nothing special about this comic, but that pose, that hair... That costume, this is peak Superman to me. All right. Hey, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you've said that that pose, that costume. Um, man, I'm horrible with numbers. Like I it's like my weakness. It's my kryptonite. Like <laughs> one of my favorite Superman comics is one I had got with a toy. 
and I don't even remember what toy, but it was right during the electric blue uh, when it started. But what yeah. it was, was it was a, a, a issue of Superman that kind of summed up his entire journey. So like, it was this nice little, if you hadn't been reading Superman and I got that as a kid and I just loved it because I, you know, I knew him from cartoons. I knew him from the, the movies, yeah. but I hadn't really got into the comics as much. And this comic would just summed up everything that kind of had been going on post crisis, like his whole journey up to him being electric blue. Yeah. So, well, and then, then there was red as well. Yep. And I have, I have that one. I somehow I bought that one. It's funny. Cause so I have I, that. I've one. never bought either of those. Um, mm-hmm. And I found, did you see the thing I posted on uh, Twitter yesterday that showing the origins of Superman red and Superman blue? It's mm-hmm. from like, yeah, I had no idea. And these were from like this, like 60s 90s. or 70s, maybe. Oh, yeah, 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 that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's that quick one. Yeah, that's, it's so fascinating. Um, Just that whole thing. And then, because the big famous ones from the electric era. Yeah. But yeah, how it started even back then in the 60s, because we did a whole thing. Because like, that's what me and James's joke's all about. Because I always do blue and he always does red as his color scheme. Oh, that's cool. So who is your favorite live action Superman? Chris Reeve. No, I'll say there are no wrong answers here. As long as Chris, you can give me an argument of why. <laughs> Christopher Reeve, to me, looks like he walked right out of the pages of the comic book. Makes sense. And uh, I mean, the, the way he carried himself, you know, in, in the movies, you know, the family, the family, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the people, the people, you know, you've got to protect the people. That was that was Superman. And uh, I think uh, Henry Cavill is I think he could have done the exact same thing if if uh, his agent and, and the different um, people in charge didn't screw him over. You I know? think the biggest miss for him was not giving him a solo Superman sequel. Yes. Before, before going, BVS. Yes. Before branching into creating, because I've said this a, a, a bunch of times that like, um, what do you call it? There is like man of steel was never set up to be the launch of a universe. It's so insulary. Yeah. Um, I agree but then they that. tried to make it because it wasn't planned. It was supposed to be the Dark Knight's version of Superman. You know, Which, Batman I, Begins of yeah. Superman. Um, I, so had a lot of, I had a lot of issues with that um, coming right out uh, because that that is not Superman to me. Superman is not a dark character. But I figured that we could get through Man of Steel 1 by Man of Steel 2. You know, that should be what gives us the hopeful traditional Superman. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 totally. I, 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 excuse me. I completely understand. I understand that way of thinking, but then they decided to change the course. So, all right. Next question. Favorite Superman movie. Mm. Superman two of the Donner cut. Mm, nice. I have a high respect for the Donner cut. I really, I like it a lot. And there's only like the, I think the only thing I've liked in Superman two, the Lester cut really is the general where you step outside line. Yeah. I do like that. I and I think like that's, that I really, cause like I watched them there for a while. Like I watched them like at the same time, <laughs> I watched them back to back. I took notes and there's little <laughs> things in it that like blur but I can't remember which is which, you know, yeah. there's some things that stand out very prominently. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I tell a story all the time, like before the, for the longest time when I was a kid, I didn't realize what was Superman, the movie and what was Superman two. Yeah. Cause I, I have it. I had it taped from TV for the longest time. Um, and it was both of them. And I just didn't realize. You just had them on one cassette. Yeah. I didn't yeah. realize that it was the two different movies. And you just thought this was one super long movie. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't even think about it. You just watched it and, you know, you maybe yeah. you walked away for a while and came back to the TV and you were, you know, you're a kid. You just take it all in. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Next basic super question. Hmm. I don't know. I usually have like, I have a list usually, but I couldn't find it. Um, but I know a lot of it's just the same repeat. Are you a for... Live action, are you a Trunks or no Trunks, man? Oh, I got to go with Trunks. What's, I think 
I was listening to you talk earlier about like, and we'll get into this here in a minute. But we'll just get into it now. We'll use it as a segue. With okay. Superman Legacy, you and I started talking about this online. And I was like, we'll just hold it. We'll yeah. hold it until we chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was listening to you talk a little bit. I really think, and you said this too, that there's going to be more of this traditionalism in this film. I think so. There has to be. And I agree with that. I think even from the casting gives you a sense because you know how like you'll cast and you'll be like, oh, I can see it. Or I'll wait mm-hmm. to see what the actor does. I feel like with the casting that we've got so far for Superman Lois, you just look at him and you're like, yes. Yeah. I oh, see yeah. It. Like there's no, no squint. There's no like, okay, I can see it. You know, you're just you like. Got, all you got to yeah. do is make both of their hair brown like or dark black. Um, she needs to be black or dark brown or black, and he needs to be black. He's black, yeah. I'm big on color, hair color. I've said this many times. Christopher Reeve was like a like a ginger almost. And yeah, he was he light. He dyed his hair every time. That's how it should be. I'm just saying yep. that's part of the character's traits. Yep. Okay. So dye that hair. You get that hair dyed. You get in your suit, and I'm I guarantee you that he's gonna look like the dude, man. So, I was thinking about when you're talking about the costume. Mm-hmm. I have this kind of. Because you were talking about the symbol. You want just the bigger, more traditional symbol. Yeah. And I was and I was thinking about this like, yes, I want it, but at the same time, I need I want it to have something that makes it its own. Cause it's a, it's the marketing in me. You know, it's like even like you look at Chris's symbol, Chris's symbol, Dean's symbol are are pretty much indistinguishable. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Brandon Ralph has his own styles. I say styles because yeah. he got two of them. Right. Uh, technically, Henry got two. Um, Tom never got his own um, when he did, you know, on Smallville and everything. No, that was just a reuse of uh, Returns, I think. Yeah, it was. And yeah. so I understand where you're coming from with like, and even even Tyler's symbol on, on Superman and Lois is pretty uh, it's standard. Not bad. It's pretty standard, except it has a little the texture to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess I'm kind of in this spot where I want it to have its own little bit of difference, just enough that when I look at it, like from a marketing point of view, I can be like, oh, that's from Legacy. Like, yeah. that's my Legacy Superman t-shirt or, you know, that's my, like, um, you know, my, man, my Superman Returns, my Man of Steel shirt, like... It's still the same character because we've seen that, especially bringing up the other guy, in I mean, Batman. Look, if, if they want to go with the uh, the chest emblem that is in My Adventures with Superman in live action or something close to that, I'm I'm fine with that. That's See, the, not the, what I would choose, but you yeah, know, you could definitely make that say, okay, well, this belongs to this era. I feel like there there's something they can do that's slight, slight enough that you don't really notice it, but it it works. You know, yeah, like, you know, the, the, the kingdom come style. is a little different, even heck. Yeah. Even, um, I, I love that. I get to say this. First of all, even the Nick cage style S has its yeah. own little signia to it, bro, bro. His <laughs> people were hating on Nick cage after that, that cameo, but that suit, like where you actually see him standing in the suit, like it's bright and popping, you know, that mm. suit is pretty bad ass. Man, uh, tell me, you've seen the documentary, right? Yo, yeah. But I knew about this well before the documentary even hit because I had a Superman magazine and it was talking about this movie that Tim Burton was going to do, Superman Returns. And I read all about it. I saw all the initial images. I still I still have the magazine in my long box. That's awesome. Because, you know, I have, I'm trying to think. I had, it was one of those, like, I used to buy movie magazines all the time. And it was like, you know, upcoming movies in some sort of production. And it was the first time I read about they were going to do this Lord of the Rings thing down the line. Yeah. That New Line looked at it. And then it had a blip about Superman lives in it. So, like, I knew about it. But when I first saw the first trailer for that documentary. Yeah. I was so excited. And then it kept getting pushed out more because they actually, when that trailer hit, got funding for it. And was able to go and do more. And... When that thing pre-launched for purchase, I I like I bought the most expensive package because I was like I want to support this and I wanted 
And I love that documentary. It's one of my yeah. favorite documentaries. Um, so I was super excited with the flash cameo of the Nick Cage Superman. Oh, me too. Um, Cause I knew exactly why he was there. there and then no, no question in my mind of like, yep, that's he's fighting the spider man. I know. <laughs> I know. So with thinking about that, cause like the costume they used in the flash is the costume design that they had been testing him for, for his basic Superman costume. Right. And in that he has trunks, mm-hmm. but they're a little bit more just crotchal. I guess you could I say know. like, cause they kind of come up higher on the hips. Yeah. And I can see how you would, you would uh, assume such things, but yeah, no, I see what you're saying. I totally and see then, what you're saying. I think the best looking trunks that we've had was the Brandon Routh kingdom come style suit. Oh yeah. Yeah. That suit was fire. So that suit, I think about that. And I think on our poll, we had a whole discussion on Superman suits. That one won out as best live action suit. And I kind of have that in my mind right now. I really like the Superman Lois season three suit. Mm -hmm. So those are my two favorite live action suits. Okay. Um, okay. I mean, that makes sense. They're all really, really good, sh- good suits. But Brandon, uh, of course, his suit winning just reconnects to Christopher Reeve because he was playing his still in crisis. He was playing his Christopher Reeve's character. See, I have, I have a whole theory. Okay. I'm going to throw this at you. Okay. I have officially decided that Brandon is not playing Christopher Reeve directly. He's playing Christopher Reeve style adjacent. Okay, And my my thought is, because with the whole, like, originally when that movie came out, it was supposed to, you know, erase kind of three and four and pick up. Right, right. And be, you know. But we've had so much time. We've had him play Superman twice now. and Yeah, we have. And then, you know, having Chris appear in The Flash. And then I got to think about, you know what? It makes more sense for Brandon after Crisis. He's on his own Earth. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's close to Chris's Earth. But it just because I feel like he plays close enough to Chris, but then the world around him doesn't play that. No. So Pete mm-hmm. Bosworth isn't playing Margot Kidder. Franklin Jell is not Jackie Cooper. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So no, I'm looking you. at I say all this because I feel like it's he's his own Superman. And I think rewatching because me and my wife, um we I I asked her we were uh Superman Day came up. So which one do you want to watch? And she's like, let's watch Returns. I haven't watched it in a long time. So her and I watched that together with fresh eyes because I always like to use her as a sounding board. And we talked about the same kind of concept of Brandon's. And I just feel like I got I got the honor to meet him back in September. And I'm just like, you know what? He deserves to be not seen as Chris 2.0. No, but you're right. Him, you know, you're himself. Right. Yeah. And that's yeah, just, that's I, just, I agree. That's just where I've come around to it. Like, you know, cause I feel like, you know, even if he, if they really did want him to be Chris, going back to what you said, they should have done his suit more like With Chris's, Chris's suit. suit. Yeah. I mean, for all, for all intenses, intents and purposes, uh, Superman returns was pitched to take place after Superman two. Yeah. That's, that's where it was in the timeline. So uh, and if you ever get a chance to speak with Robert Meyer Burnett, he has mm-hmm. an entire backstory on that. It's it's an amazing, like, just of a story to listen to of how that movie came to be. Yeah, because it's so convoluted and, and twisty. Yeah, if you sit, his DMs are open. Uh-huh. Send him a DM and and say, hey man, I'm interested in the backstory of Superman Returns. He was involved in it, and uh, I'm sure that he would love to come on and like just talk like an hour and and yeah. just give you everything. Yeah, we'll we'll get that hooked up in the future. Because all of all of the stuff that he's going to talk about is what was supposed to be in the beginning of the movie, but scrapped at the last second. Okay, yeah. So we're going to get him on here. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk more after we're done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, we're talking about costume for David coming up. Is like if they can do the trunk similar to way they did the Kingdom Come style, where they're a little bit more full. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I think. I think even the Superman Returns trunks aren't too bad. Um, I think there's a way to do it and it not look as off-putting. Yeah. So I'm curious because we're going back to saying like doing Superman to where 
um, it just looks like that Superman, not like a take or an interpretation. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's it. Yeah. Well, and it can be, it can be any type of material because, you know, he, he has that uh, energy that he makes throughout his body. So his clothes are protected, Mm -hmm. you know, basically from that uh, force field that's on his body. And uh, so he, I mean, even in the comics, when uh, they said that his mom made his suit, that's why his suits don't get destroyed, you know, going up against these huge, huge uh, aliens. It's the aura. Yeah. The bio, his, his bioelectric aura. aura. Yep. I like, I kind of in this torn, like, I really liked a lot of the steps they made on Superman and Lois because mm-hmm. I really like that he has his first suit that his mom makes him, which is the very yeah. Max Fleischer inspired. And yeah. then I kind of figure he got the second suit probably from the fortress. That's my yeah. head cannon. Yeah. It just feels how you, right. How do you feel about um, so many people out there on the internet wanting uh, this new Superman to have the Max Fleischer uh, logo? I think it could be cool. Um, but my only I've, response to that is that normies don't know what that is. Yeah, they don't. Um, they, but they it, need to see they need to see the red and the yellow. I think. I think it's a way though to make him stand out, and it goes back to like that marketing thing. Yeah, because because the S and the shield, no matter what. Um, I got in an argument with somebody online because they were talking about being classic and traditional. Like, let's take it back to how Superman was traditional, and I put the image of Action Comics number one Superman shield. <laughs> like you mean? I was like, you mean like this? They're like, no, no, and I'm like, that that's tradition. That's the original man. Like that's traditional. Um, I I love the Max Fleischer style. I always have. Um, I think it could be something really uniquely done. I've seen some cool fan mock-ups. Um, I'm not opposed to do to having, you know, two suits where you have scenes with him with the original Martha made suit. Then he has a more Kryptonian made suit. So where you could get away with kind of a little bit of differences here and there. So. Um, you've read, uh, Don of Superman, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to get a good picture. Um, Lois doing her thing. Come on. Super. Okay. So in the tight, you, you can kind of see in the, mm-hmm. um, he, he's got his trunks on. He's got his yellow, he's got his yellow belt. You know, he's got his classic colors. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh I, I think that I think they're doing it right. Um let me see if I can get a clearer color for you. Okay, so all the way down. Yeah. He's in his trunks, he's got his colors, he's, you know, everything looks perfect. I think that yeah would be what I would want to go with. I want a long cape. That was yeah. one th- is like with Chris's costume, the boots were too high and the cape was too short. Yep. So I, I'm okay. I would like, like we, I heard you, you're talking about like the, the yellow S on the back. Yes. I want that, but I want it. This is just me being picky. I want it. I want yellow S on the back, but I want it more in the style of how they did in the new 52 where it was black because mm. it, but do it in yellow. Like it doesn't have to be that exact style, but like instead of being solid yellow, like it's just the yellow S um, with the back red, you know? Yeah. Because I really want, if we see Krypton, one of my favorite things from the new 52 was the fact that the Cape was jor Cape and he took his Cape off and wrapped Cal in it and sent him. So I like that idea that the Cape that Superman wears is his father's. Yeah. So, and that's something I'd like to see in the film. Um, but I definitely do want the S in the back of the Cape. However they choose to do it. It's definitely something I would like to have come back. Yeah. I, if they could do it for the Christopher Reeve movies, they could certainly do it now with CGI. Oh, it's so simple. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just put the, put the, put the S up back on the Cape, man. I mean, that is like, that is traditional. Like you, if you give him his trunks back and you give him his belt, his full belt and his, S on the back of this cape. I mean, that's all I want, man. That's I all. like. So one thing I will say is with Superman Returns, I like the belt in Superman Returns. I like that it had. Yeah, the like, belt was good. 
I liked that it was yellow standard mm-hmm. belt, but then it had his symbol. Yeah, on front as like the buckle compared to just this oval. So right, that's right. one of those things. I'm like, okay, yellow belt, I, perfect, yeah. but we'll make it work. See, we figured this out. We got this. We cracked yeah. the code here. Yeah, I, I, I am so. excited. Like, um, if you can see behind me on my, there's a box on top of my short boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of hard to see here next to my bookshelf. That is called the legacy box. Ah. That is the box that my kids and I have made where we put our spare change or dollars in as we save for two years to buy Superman legacy merchandise. Oh, okay. cool, man. <laughs> I, I dig that. That is our plan because I got thinking like my kids are cool as heck, you know, and no matter what you thought about the flash movie, it was exciting for them. It's probably the most hyped they have been for my daughter loves the flash period. I love for, that movie. Uh, my son loves, my daughter also really likes Supergirl. My, nice. And of course, everybody loves Batman. We're getting two versions of Batman and, you know, and I had taken last year my son to see uh, the Cinemark movie theaters did Batman 89, Batman Returns, and Mask of the Phantasm in theaters. Mm-hmm. So we did a triple feature, me and my son did last year. Awesome. So we were all, like, it was the most pump we have been for a DC movie as a family in a long time. Oh, yeah. You know, and I got thinking about how how much the hype was from Superman Returns and Man of Steel. And I'm like, I hope that's what we get for Superman Legacy. And now I have that with I have my kids to share that with. Yeah, I, I hope the same thing, man, because Superman Legacy, it's going to have to swing this out of the park, man. They're going to have to swing for the fences. This They can't like do it just half-assed you know i apologize for the language oh you're fine but uh you know they have to superman legacy has to be like a critical hit and it has to be um a hit with the movie going audience you know it does it has to be a general it has to be the kind of movie that i could take my grandmother to see mm -hmm. and she feels like that superman you know even though and then you know DC be- has a problem with uh, retaining their uh, fan base right now. They have a fan base problem. And a lot of that has to do with, uh, like, it can be traced back with BVS. When that didn't hit a billion, then Warner Brothers started meddling and changing everything. All the other films that were supposed to fall in line afterwards, it all became a big cluster. You know what? Yeah. And so people kept coming back less and less and less. Yeah. Okay. There was wonder woman and Aquaman surprised everybody with a billion. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the Superman, yeah, I think it's smart doing Superman as your first official launch into the DCU, because you have to build as James Gunn, he's going to have to build everything on top of Superman's shoulders yeah. to make it work. You can't start without Superman. I agree. Just like the comics, you know, and DC really just took off with action comics. Yep. Um, and the other thing you're talking about the fan base and that's going to kind of bring us into part of our discussion today is something that DC has really been lacking is catering to children. And I say okay. that as a father and I say that as someone who wants to introduce my kids to this fandom, but I need something to show them that's okay. And that's been a problem is you haven't put out anything really for kids. Right, right, right. You have Teen Titans Go, which will last forever because it's like the Simpsons for DC. Um, it'll last forever. Um, but, you, you know, you put out DC Superhero Girls, but that was so hard to find to watch. Yeah. And, then, and then it just disappeared. I, I got the game for my Switch and I was never able to find it again. Yeah, I want to buy it for my daughter. Um, yeah. I ended up buying the Superhero Girls. Um, it was on Netflix, the first season was. They never put on the second season. I just bought the second season digitally for her. Um, but that's that's the problem. Yeah. You know, there's no cartoons on for my kids to watch. I've dug out, like, all the, the Bruce Tim stuff we've been watching through. Mm-hmm. We actually just started Batman Beyond, uh, me and the kids did. And that's where they pull a lot of their love for this stuff from. You know, what's sad when I was growing up, all of this stuff would have been on Saturday morning or after afternoon after school. Yep. You know, this is how we would have consumed these, these cartoons and we would have had no problem doing it. 
And now there's, there's no, like, you know, I, I feel bad and we won't go into the whole reason why, but super pets was a lot of fun last year to watch with the kids. Yeah, I liked it. It was a fun movie. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, the kids loved it. The local theater by our house here actually just showed it on Thursday morning for part of their summer free movies for the kids and stuff. Um, so that was like the first thing I felt other than Lego Batman mm-hmm. and Teen Titans go to the movies, um, which I'm a big, I've said this many times. I prefer Teen Titans go to the movies over Lego Batman. Okay. If wants to argue with me, that's fine. But other than that, there hasn't been anything that's been like, that's really felt like it's been for kids. Right, right, right. You know, except for maybe, um, mm, I want to say Star Girl, but I don't know. See, Star Girl and The Flash when it started were very family oriented shows. Yeah, I watched all of Star Girl with my daughter. Loved it. I love that show. Very underappreciated. Oh yeah, I, I hate that it only got three seasons. Um, it didn't have the name recognition, but wow, was it a good show? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Um, the flash, I've been rewatching the flash. Cause like I said, my daughter, she loves the flash and the flash is great up to about season four. Then it starts getting wonky. And yep. then by season five, by six, I think it's where it's completely going downhill. That's when they should have just pulled it. They shouldn't yep. have gone to nine. Unfortunately, they should have just after crisis have been like, we're done. Um, but other, like those are great. Cause that's the family environment where me, my wife, my kids, we can all watch it together, Yeah. but there hasn't been that thing. But now. Now we have something that's for the family, but is for the kids. Absolutely. And, and I have a soundbite I'm going to throw into the podcast here. That's my son. Cause he, I, we watched the first episode of my adventure with Superman. And I looked over and my wife was smiling. My son was smiling. My daughter was smiling. They were laughing and they just looked blissfully happy. And when the first episode was over, I looked at and they're like, let's watch the next one. They were ready to go. You know, my awesome. son was my son was laughing. He's like, I'm like Jimmy, you know? <laughs> and you know, we were all laughing and he took my phone after. Cause I was like, I'm gonna get this. And cause we always do this a lot of times when we see something, he took my phone and he's walking around the living room talking about how much he liked the, the show. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need. Yes. So the Superman and getting kids back into these characters. Superman is that character to do this with. Yeah. Superman, Superman is for everybody, but you can make, you can make a series that, uh, talks for like on the levels of the young ones, you know, and it resonates with them and it's, it's resonating with people who like anime, you know, and it's also resonating with people, you know, my age who don't like bad writing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, or like a lot of changing to the the Superman mythos. But uh all my issues aside, man, if this if this show uh can manage to bring in and snag a couple thousand more Superman fans into the world, then then it's all worth it. It's got my blessing. I agree. Like every any Superman that comes out is someone's first, you know. Yeah, absolutely. However, however they see it and if this is going to introduce people to the character awesome yeah if we were re-watching the pilot today and the kids just loved it and that's what makes me happy is you know the one thing i, d- I didn't mention was they did justice league action back in 2016 yeah i like that great that was a great show and it just kind of disappeared it did i loved and it continued from justice league unlimited yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it was loosely, loosely a- yeah. attached to uh, that original DCAU because you had the the voices back, um, which I thought was awesome. And um, but yeah, it didn't do anything. It had one season, and that was it. And you know, I I bought that when it came out, like episode by episode. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Cartoon Network does not know how to handle any DC property other than Teen Titans Go. <laughs> facts yes i feel the same way i feel the same way and that's why i'm happy like i know that my adventures with superman dropped on max but i Mm -hmm. went ahead and bought the season my digitally and i'll buy it when it comes out on physical too i'm gonna buy it when it's on physical just to have it in my collection exactly i'm i'm a physical still collector you know but i also like to support things because yes i'm watching on max but i'm also like i really want this and i like this and i'm gonna put my money where my mouth is Yep. Um, 
and have it. So what did you get? Just we'll go back now. This show was announced almost it was it was two years ago actually. This show was announced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how did you feel about it when it was first announced? Um I was excited first and most of all to be getting another uh Superman animated show. The fact that it looked like they were going to be using anime was kind of like, uh, I guess we'll just have to wait and see because I, I just don't get the, I can't get into anime. It just, it, I I'm must with, be past that cutoff. I just, you know, I, I had so many people my age growing up, like this girl I dated, she loved Sailor Moon and was really into it. Yeah. And the closest I ever came was like Voltron. Yes. And, and I, I didn't even know that was anime until I was older. And Gundam Wing, like my brother really liked Gundam Wing, so I watched some of it. Um, but I guess, like for me, it was uh, the original Teen Titans. Mm-hmm. You know, Teen Titans, like yeah, that, that was, was the closest. Kind, yeah, it is kind of anime-ish uh, to me. And so I was a little hesitant, you know, when they were t- showed the thing being a little anime-ish. I was like, ah. but no, I feel like it walks the line perfectly. Yeah, I mean, there are certain characteristics of these characters that I have a problem with. Um, But overall, I feel like they are still fairly true to themselves. I just don't like the fact that they're all interns. That don't bother me. I like, I feel like it's fresh. I mean, you know, my thing is thinking about today, like in the world we live in, Mm -hmm. journalism is a dying thing like serious journalism is dying like i worked for my local small town paper for a while and it was rough you know Mm -hmm. so the fact that they're starting out as interns i mean they've they've kind of shortened that gap of age between clark and jimmy Uh, um let me ask you this is a question i've been going around as we prepare for what we believe will be a casting of jimmy olsen at some point what do you think is the optimal age for jimmy and clark and we're going to use for the film david is going to be 30 years old as they start filming. And that's how old Clark's going to be in the movie. Mm-hmm. So if Clark is 30, where should Jimmy be? Mm, in in your opinion. Question. Uh, because Jimmy is usually in his teens. Um, well, I want to say, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, you go ahead. I'll give you my rationale, my thought after. Okay, I would, I, with Jimmy, for being the type of character Jimmy is, Jimmy has to be younger. Um, so I would say early to mid-20s, max. See, my my barometer is five years, no more than eight. Mm-hmm. Because I think you want him to be young enough that he looks up to Clark. Yep. He looks, he's more like Clark Kent's little brother. Yeah. and But can be a friend, you know? Instead of being like, you go too far, it looks more like parent child. Yeah, and I think, exactly. you know, that, that's kind of how I felt like when you go back and you watch like the George Reeves series, very star- stoic, strong Clark, mentor, you know, figure to yep. young Jim. Okay. Yep. But I feel like now, you know, Jimmy's like that third wheel of like the Daily Planet staff that it needs to be shorter. Mm -hmm. Um, but not, not too much that you don't feel it's odd that they're friends. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, the relationship between Jimmy and, uh, Superman and the Christopher Reeve movies, you know, they, I still feel like that was a little, because was was, his, his Clark is such a, I would say close to like what I felt we were getting with Brandon Routh and Sam Huntington. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was a dynamic. I wish we could have explored more Mm -hmm. because Huntington had that very strong energy as a yeah, youthful energy while well, Brandon had that. I'm still young, but I'm kind of more formed. Um, Chris, you know, but it's also that pre-crisis Superman. Yeah. Compared to what we've had since then. So it's, it's kind of hard to juggle, but that's true. Um, but I'm with you there. Like, you know, um, I do like the, him calling him CK more than Mr. Kent kind of thing. You know, like, yeah, I mean, I, that, that uh, came to me Michael. from, yeah. Uh, New Adventures of Lois and Clark, New Adventures of Superman, you know, and it's, it's stuck, yeah. stuck with me ever since. And it was just that one actor. It was the second actor that started it. Because when they brought Justin Whalen in, um, I think I liked the first guy that was Jimmy, but he was yeah. a little too, he looked more mature. Yeah. Little, Michael, I can't remember his last name. 
Um, but they, they, they switched out the casting because they felt like he looked too much like Superman himself <laughs> that, you know, they wanted someone who could be a little bit more of like Superman's pal. Yeah. That's where and, Justin Whalen came in. And I thought he, he was a he great Jimmy. Park. Yeah. He, he was good. Yeah. So with the show, what, what else are some of your thoughts going on with it? Um, I don't, I don't understand why, like when he activates his powers, something activates on the Kent farm. You know, uh, where where he went in to meet Jor-El. I think that is weird. And I know that's something very anime, but mm. that that is going to be a pro- that would be a problem if this thing activates every time he's in Metropolis doing his thing or around the world. Eventually, somebody's going to see this. And because he was supposed to be in like a little rocket, you know, that landed on Earth. And then she's like, this is what we found you in. And it opened up like this huge hole in the ground. I'm like, what is this going to be the fortress of solitude? What are we doing here? I think you're right on both accounts. I think it is the fortress, but I think because there's a line in the second episode where he says it's gotten bigger. Mm. I think it's, he landed and it was small, but then it just naturally has grown through the technology oh, and it's okay. going to be the fortress and it's going to do something um, cause that was kind of my thought, like, Whoa, okay. What is going on? And yeah, like the one thing that kind of bugged me, I'll say this is he didn't use any heat vision, mm-hmm. you know, like when he was fighting the robots, I expected heat vision. That's one of my favorite powers. Yeah. Mine too. Um, so I was a little offbeat by that. I was like, okay, what's going on? Um, but it worked. It was cool. It was cool. Well, um, and the fact that like one robot almost beat his ass. And I'm thinking that there's something in his, and I'm not nitpicking. Like I'm going to, it's only two episodes in, like I'm going to give you time to develop your story of your power. Cause yes. maybe he hasn't fully embraced his power or there's something that's been kind of holding him back or. I mean, there's always something that holds uh, Clark back. I mean, we look at Smallville, how like the idea was like this mental block that he had built mm-hmm. that he couldn't fully embrace his powers. Right. Um, you know, Superman, the animated series, they kind of depowered him some. So I'm going to roll with what they're giving me, you know, to see. And it feels like it's a Clark who never really learned to control his powers. He just still mm-hmm. kind of bumbles through life a little. Yeah. You could just tell that from the first episode where he was just wearing the hoodie. Yeah. You know? And like he, yeah. he crushed the alarm clock. He ripped off the faucet, right. you know? Yeah. So, I'm like, I'm going to roll with it. Whatever you're giving me, because this is your, as long as it's not nothing that I feel is completely out of place. Yeah. So even though like in this TV show, he's, he is said to have been dealing with his powers in one form or another since he was about 10 years old. I would say, yeah. Um, I would still be comfortable calling this something like Superman year one. Yeah, I agree. Cause he, he's not, you know, Superman per se yet and i mean he does in the second episode and but i'm I, i'm sh- i bet there's going to be uh, episodes where he's got to have a learning curve on certain abilities oh yeah i mean you know i i was never like it was always weird in superman in the movie how he went to the fortress and just kind of like walked out yeah you know yeah, yeah um superman lois shows some cool like montages of him training up there you know um Smallville is, you know, all about him developing and learning his powers. And I've always kind of liked that. So, you know, what are they going to give us? I'm cool with. Yeah. How do you feel about um, Perry's? I think Perry is a difficult character to portray because I feel like so much of Perry isms were similar to J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. And, and then JJ just blew up in the zeitgeist because of the Spider-Man movies. So it's kind of hard to be like, this is Perry. Um, but how did you feel about Perry's portrayal? Um, I thought his portrayal was uh, pretty typical Perry from a lot of the comics. I, I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, I felt like he felt like that very, and I'm, I'm like, I put it in the perspective of journalist now, mm-hmm. how it's so difficult to like, you got the young kids and it's so easy. They want to post stuff. and but actually like you have to find the facts and just being kind of overwhelmed by yeah this is legit journalism not <laughs> you know your blog post yeah um so i kind of got that worn down fatherly like uh, feeling from him yeah especially when you consider like uh lois clark and 
and uh, Jimmy all look like they're in their very early twenties. Yeah. So they're all very green. And I, I like, I like that because it's just that little bit of difference twist on what we know. Yeah. You know, we all, we always get introduced in the story of Clark coming up. Lois is established. Well, what happens when like, what do little, uh, um, the recent film, uh, Superman man of tomorrow, the animated mm, yeah. film where he was an intern and Lois was on the precipice of becoming a full-time reporter. Yep. I love that. I like that. You know, I liked that because I like the idea starting and I, I like, you know, Clark starting from the bottom because mm-hmm. it is, it gets him somewhere to go. And with him on the bottom, there's not as many eyes on him. I don't know. It's, it's a good angle to start him with and starting with a full-time, you know, reporter. And yeah, there's this, more dynamics. This still gives him uh, opportunities to like, jump out of windows and go save, yep. go, go save a couple, you know? So, yeah, I hope, actually, I hope that's the um, kind of some of the inspiration that James Gunn is going to be using for Superman legacy, because I know it's going to be like a work, a workplace origin story. So I hope it's, he's more of the uh, underling and Lois is already doing Lois stuff. Mm-hmm. I and, agree. you know, they get partnered up, but, she bosses him around like traditional because she's in charge and, you know, and he goes and do, does these things and, and protects her from all these different things that she has no idea. So yeah, kind of, kind of like, um, a lot like, um, the first Superman movie, you know, um, he was very much, um, subservient to, yeah. to her Lois Lane. I'm, I just, I really want a good dynamic. Yeah. Um, I have all kinds of thoughts about what I want in the movie, but I'm going to kind of wait and see as we get a little bit. So I don't go on too much of these tangents of, Oh, they should do yeah, this. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> as long as it's look, I'm not going to say anything bad about man of steel, but ex- except for the fact that it was not traditional Superman, Henry Cavill to date has not been able to play the traditional Superman that he actually wanted to play. So, James Gunn involved in this, you know, involved in this. I'm hoping that this is going to be the most traditional Superman we've seen since Christopher Reeve. I agree. I mean, my, like, I have loved so much of Superman and Lois. Yeah, me too. Like, I'm not, a, I'm not a person who's always jumped on whatever the current is, is their favorite. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, new Spider-Man. Oh, Tom Holland's now my favorite. No, it's still no. Garfield. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, see, mine's still McGuire. McGuire. I like Maguire as Spider-Man, but his Peters kind of feels like it should be a creeper. Like some of this, <laughs> like it just, I, I can I, see that, you know, me and Jania, that's my wife. Um, we, we binge watch recently, all of that 70 show before that 90 show. Oh yeah. We were talking about Spider-Man three. And I was like, you know what? If Topher Grace had been Peter Parker, I think he would have nailed it, mm-hmm. you know, over uh, Maguire. But I like Maguire. I have nothing against him. It's just there's little things I like that Andrew has a little bit better balance of Spider-Man and Peter. And yeah. I feel like when he's Spider-Man, he looks like a Steve Ditko Spider-Man. Um, Fair enough. But all that to say, like, I'm not always like, like when Christian Bale came out as Batman, he wasn't my favorite Batman. No. You know, I wasn't like, oh, this is this is it now. Um, I always have, kind of, I actually preferred Val Kilmer for the most, like, because I, because he did more action in his movie, you know, than Michael Keaton was kind of just kind of stand around, but well, it's gotten, his, his suit was so freaking stiff. Yeah. yeah. But as I've gotten older, I have appreciation more for the acting choices and stuff that Keaton did. Yeah. Um, but you know, Ben Affleck is my favorite Batman, even though I feel like he didn't, once again, he didn't get his chance to really shine Mm-mm. by getting his own movie. If you um, would have gotten his own movie, he would have probably uh, taken the rank away from Michael Keaton f- for me. Yeah. As my Batman. I really, th- I really think it would have cemented him more as this powerhouse Batman. I think um, so. But I say all that because like, when I say like, uh, I did, a, I did an interview with Ed Gross who had ro- who wrote the voices from Krypton book, which is an amazing book for anybody. And he said, it, he said, he, I'm a Superman fan. I kind of go where the character goes. He's like, I don't really have a favorite version. There's things I like, but I enjoy whatever's current. And I was like, you know what? That's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but Tyler has become my favorite Superman because as a father of two and the character of Superman being a father was always something that in the comics, you know, hit hard. Yeah. Um, resonated with me. 
technically, John Kent was born in the Convergence Issues in 2015. My son was born in 2015. So cool. Cool. as I'm reading Superman become a dad, I had just become a dad. And um, so like that always kind of stuck with me. So like having this version of Superman on TV that he's dealing with being a father and all this, uh, it just, it just resonates with me. And um, so like, he's my favorite right now, but there's not one that I can say I don't love. Yeah. You know, no. Um, same with me. I I love, I I mean, I even love Kirk Allen who, was the first live action before George Reeves. Kirk, Kirk had some, so uh, it's been about, it's been under a year. My wife and I, she, I was watching all the serials for a podcast and she popped in and out with me. And it's been about a year. Um, And there's like a couple things that he's very like sarcastic at times. And it's just kind of funny because he's very like, uh huh. Mm-hmm. There's nothing going to get me now. Like, it's just kind of funny, but <laughs> you know, he had the job of being the first one to do it the first person to don the live action costume and george there's things i love in his portrayal so it's yep. much more of a matter of fact man like um so there's there's not a version that i can say that i hate no i mean you, I, we can go from kirk allen to george reeves to uh the two actors that played superboy in the 80s yep. um to to uh, Dean Cain for uh, Lois and Clark to Tom Welling for Smallville. You know, I mean, I liked all these shows. The only one that I will say is the worst. And I say this because it's on film is David Wilson in the musical version that was filmed for television, which is horrible <laughs> because they chopped up the musical, but, and because it exists on film, it happened. It's not like poor Bob holiday where we don't have any kind of like, great video archive footage of him on stage, you know, playing the right, character. Right. But well, we've kind of been talking about a lot of stuff. Why don't you tell us real quick, we'll kind of wrap up here. Like tell us about your podcast. Okay. Well, uh, my channel, it, uh, it's a very pop culture, uh, slanting type of channel. Um, I've been doing a lot of superhero stuff on it lately, but I, I also do, uh, reactions to music because I am a musician as well. And, um, also a gaming channel, you know, because I've got to get in my, uh, my gaming uh, every now and then, but, uh, yeah. And we, we have people on and we're going to do a stream tomorrow. It's going to be a celebration of Superman, uh, tomorrow nice. night at seven 30, uh, central standard time. And, uh, of course you're invited if you'd like to come and, uh, we're just going to be talking Superman and, and all the different forms of media that he's been in. So yeah, that's what we do. That's awesome. That sounds cool. Um, yeah, I uh, I had in my notes to talk music with you. Oh yeah, uh, but I think we need to get back together and do a whole podcast and just on music. That would be great because I'm a bass player and I have a whole history of playing in bands and a whole. I have a very fascinating story that we'll talk about. But hold that thought. We're gonna wrap this up, and I want to thank Sean. Sean, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me at Sean Stackhouse Reacts on YouTube and uh, Twitch and uh, Sean Stackhouse on Twitter. All right, man. Well, thanks for being here. You're welcome anytime. And remember, 